This is Twit. GPS spoofing. Now, we all kind of rely on GPS. I use it every day. Waze is one of my fa- favorite applications to go through traffic and get directions. But if, you, if you're a developer, like, for instance, for Android or for mobile platform, you're f- fairly familiar with what we call GPS spoofing, be- spoofing because that allows you to essentially change your location on demand by, uh, for the uh, for the device so that the application or the code that you're writing can go run and test on it. So you basically spoof your location, change it, and then the app kind of goes into text and you can run tests that way. But normally that doesn't really, it's not easily done for consumer devices or even commercial devices because uh, obviously these things are a little bit more harder to kind of get into and, uh, and break open. Well, back in 2013, University of Texas built a $2,000 box that could actually spoof a GPS sing- signal aboard an $80 million yacht. Now, the reason this worked was because GPS signals are sent from satellites to Earth without any authentication or encryption. Now, it was only a matter of time this was going to be exploited and more readily available. So Virginia Tech, China's University of Electronic Science and Technology, and Microsoft for Research recently wrote an 18-page paper talking about doing the same thing for only $225. Essentially, they just used a Raspberry Pi, and a hacker, a hack RF one SDR, which is basically a software defined uh, radio peripheral, uh, in order to simulate a GPS signal. Now, the researchers tested a simulation of their attack against real cars and found it works best in cities where road networks are dense. This way, it doesn't tip off the the actual consumer or the user of it that they're actually spoofing it. Now, it basically uses algorithms to plot a fake ghost route that mimics the turn by turn navigation directions contained in the original route. Now this this is bad. This is this this means that now it's much cheaper to export G- GPS, which opens a whole big door of issues that can go along with both commercial and consumer de- devices. Like so, I want to send it over to you first, Cheaper. This is something that you know vendors are assuming that GPS is uh, you know their thing, their go-to thing. I mean, is this going to be meaning that we're going to have to go and change the protocol now and and actually implement something more secure because you know there's no way to kind of depend on it anymore. Yeah, it's it's worrisome. Um one of the things that I was on a grant program working on what's called food security. You know, we we all want to trust our food and the way the food gets to it. So what happens if a 40-foot Connex container of food gets purposely diverted because, you know, the driver thinks, oh, there's a big traffic jam going on or something, and you spoof GPS and it goes off and either someone goes and, you know, makes it come in really late uh, or something. But anyway, the whole idea is... You, there's a level of trust that people and developers have given to GPS. And what this is doing is saying, hey, we've got to start doing something more. So one of the things that uh, were discussed in a, a, um, a uh, group of scientists is, well, there's already terrestrial base systems where you combine GPS to get you into the ballpark and then you use terrestrial radio signals to increase the accuracy. And one of the, the article goes on to say maybe the uh, system should also go and uh, use um, video, you know, pictures of the area so they can start comparing it. So with Waze and all these others that use roadway maps, they could compare what the intersections look like and kind of ground truth it all. The, but you know, the whole idea is this has gotten a lot cheaper and what the article says, well, you know, because it's so small, it's easy to know. You could put higher gain antennas and amplifiers on way, way cheap. And all of a sudden, now you can have a signal that's dramatically more powerful than a satellite. So it's very worrisome. Um, I'd love to see a little bit more done, especially when we start getting into autonomous vehicles. Um, it's something that needs to be done, and we're going to have to have more research and maybe just maybe – those GPS satellites have to have maybe some digital signatures on them or so, so we know if we can trust the signal. What do you think? Right, right, right. Yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, at this point, if you're going to have to go change the protocol, you have, you have thousands of satellites that are supporting GPS today. They're going to have to have either software updates, hopefully not hardware updates. I mean, this is going to be an expensive thing moving forward, especially if organizations are going to depend on it. Now, we have seen this in the past, right, Curtis? I think you kind of pointed out this is this is this has been an exploit in the past, but it was less attainable 
by other than maybe government actors at that point. Now we're saying, hey, it's easier to get in the consumer side. I mean, what what kind of uh, exploit was this before? Was this big? Was this small? Was this dangerous? What kind of things were they exploiting? Well, last year at roughly this time, it was last August, there was a massive GPS spoofing attack that happened in the Baltic. And uh, it was pretty dangerous because all of a sudden ships that were getting ready to enter a harbor found their GPS navigation screens showing that they were about 50 miles inland. So this was something where they could look out the uh, the bridge window and see that they were getting bad information. But all of a sudden, this navigational tool that they had been using was off, and not off by a few meters, but off by tens of miles. Now, at the time, there was great speculation that this was something being done by the Russian government because they basically didn't want people to be able to track Vladimir Putin's location easily because there was some correlation between his known location and where some of these spoofs happened. And and they happened two or three times. Then they went away largely because there was such an outcry and people knew that they were going on. The thing is, as you said, at that time, this was a major, major operation because this was overwhelming commercial systems covering a radius of tens of miles in terms of its effect. What we're seeing here with this new device is something that would have a much smaller range, but could theoretically affect many more devices if it were deployed, say, in a city center. So we absolutely positively have become used to GPS for a whole variety of reasons. And if it's not trustworthy anymore, then it's a huge, huge problem. Now, the government has done research on what to do if it's disabled in time of, of, say, war or conflict, but degraded because of a cyber attack or a ransomware attack, that's something that no one has really wanted to deal with up to now. Right. And the interesting thing is it's it's cheap. I mean, the, the Raspberry Pi, obviously, we, we've worked with it before. It's a mobile charger and antenna. And of course, then they have this called Hack RF or 1SDR, which is a software defined radio peripheral, which uh, transmits the reception of radio signals from one megahertz to six gigahertz. And that allows you to essentially be used with USB peripheral and programmed for standalone operation. So it's not, it's something that's readily available. You can go get it on Adafruit or whatever and pick it up, build this thing and get moving. I, I think, Chibert, I mean, this, this makes it scary, right? Because now we're saying, hey, you know, we might have to start securing, just as Curtis said, we might have to start securing endpoints here, especially if, you, if you're if you dependent on it. I've seen tons of field service operations and commercial software to handle, like, you know, servicing trucks and, you know, there's delivery trucks and delivery services that will be affected here. Um, you know, obviously, I can think of at least 10 ways to exploit this to be able to steal things. So I think this becomes uh, kind of a big thing. If, if it's this readily available, you're going to get hackers just trying this out going forward. Is it is it something that organizations are going to have to worry about now? Yeah. You know, like, for instance, one of the examples I came up with was armored car companies are now starting to use, well, have started to use GPS so that the internal lock boxes within the armored car were not able to be opened unless you're within a certain uh, radius of the delivery location, just to make it harder for someone to steal the contents of armored cars. So if you can spoof it, all of a sudden, now you can open those lock boxes. That's, that's not a good thing. And I'm sure people like Tiffany's and so forth are quaking in their boots. Right, right, right. Well, the interesting thing, I actually saw, um, you know, there was a, a quick demo of this that we saw. There's they have a little uh, demo link. And the interesting thing is, you know, you have to be fairly close because they're, they're not as powerful as, as Curtis is saying, some of these other ones in the past. So you do have to get fairly close. And also the interesting thing about the exploit that they showed was it it's kind of a, even though it's a back door, it makes it kind of look like, um, they have to uh, trick even the user of it to think, hey, like we're going in the same direction. 
Uh, but, you know, tricking them by making the directions complex so they don't realize they're actually going in a different direction. Um, but it sounds like to me that this is going to be something that's going to be moving forward that organizations are going to have to be, pay more attention to when they're building software. I mean, I'm seeing just a quick search, Curtis. I think I'm seeing just even simple new new startups out there showing ser- simple services that are depending on GPS. Like, for instance, your field service management software, your packaging software, your delivery software. Um, you know, everything is kind of depending on this. And then, of course, all the consumer devices out there. Um, you know, where where do we go from here? Like, where do you think we should go from here at this point, especially from an enterprise perspective? Well, I think that there are several things to do. But the unfortunate piece of this is, is that virtually none of the steps that can be taken can be taken by the consumer. It, it, this is not like most GPS units are field upgradable. Uh, virtually none of them are consumer upgradable. Um, so these are the sorts of things that are going to, to have to be done at the, the manufacturer and at the satellite operator stage. So until then, I think the, the advice comes with, let's just go ahead and look out the window, do a field check, make sure that your experience matches the GPS and show a little common sense and an awful lot of paranoia. Uh, 